so pleased to have at the table Chris Domino, graphics art director of the David Letterman Show, Late Night with David Letterman. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. You just came off this iconic show, 33 years in the running. What was that like? It was great. It was. It was a job. You're gonna say. It was a job, but you don't appreciate it till it's going away, really, because that's when I started to really, you know, the culmination of everything he's done in these years. You could see all the articles on, you know, online and on TV and everything about him that's come up since announcing or since this last show is approaching, and it's like, you can't help but feed off of that and realize that you were part of something special. You did this for seven years. How'd you get the job? It was actually one of the easier jobs I've had to get. I mean, it was during a tough time to get jobs. So at the time, this was actually sort of, it was not a lateral move. It was a little bit below my qualifications. Um, you know, usually I have a fancy portfolio case. This one I had a stapled packet of pictures <laughs> of my work that I just showed the director because I knew it was nothing. They wanted to, people to Photoshop heads on other bodies and do silly things like that. And, so, you know, I went for it and then I got it. And um, So you get the job and you tell mom and dad, I'm going to do the David Letterman show and they say, what? <laughs> okay. Can you get us tickets now? <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. But uh, yeah, you know, they're obviously, oh, obviously it's huge for them because everyone could recognize what that means. Right. Um, let's, take a, let's take a look at some of your work. Now you did the open, which I'm most mm -hmm. impressed with. Let's look at that. Okay. From the heart of Broadway, broadcasting across the nation and around the world, it's The Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, Morgan Freeman, comedian Brian Regan, and music from Frightened Rabbit. Plus, Paul Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra. I'm Adam Coulter. And that Okay, is that lost on you how cool that was? Uh, a little bit, but no, yeah, it, I am proud of it. it. It is something that I'm going to look back on and you know be be proud of. It was a collaboration, though. I mean, the director of the show, Jerry Foley, got all the shots, and I, but he gave me a lot of freedom to come up with how the title comes on and how the names come on and Paul Schaefer comes on, and um, so yeah, and you know, amazing. You think you have time for these things? Because they're calling for graphics and let's go, let's go. Give, give yeah. me an idea of, of a deadline. What was it like, day to day? Day to day, you get your scripts at 11. You know, the writers That's are writing. kind of late in the day. Yeah, they're writing all morning. You get your scripts at 11. You have until, and by the way, you get up to 20 to 30 scripts a day. They pick maybe five, six of them that end up getting on air, maybe even less. And you have till 4 p.m. So we have a five-hour window to uh, produce all these things. and uh, So are you exhausted after seven years of this show? Uh, well, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting pace because, you know, you work all day. It's, you get there, it's sort of ease into the day, you work really hard, and then the show happens, and there's not too much happening during the show. Some stuff comes up, but... So I guess with that routine, and you don't take any of it home with you, which is nice, it's just all contained in that day. Right. Uh, so that's always been a nice thing. Um, I'm not thinking about it when I go home. I go and do other other things. And are you funny naturally? Because uh, <laughs> the things we're about to see are very funny. Uh, you know, well, you know, I feel like I've. You know what's funny? I feel like I've gotten less funny since working at the show. Really? Yeah. Because it's all work. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so before that, I would, you know, be funny on my own, I guess. And and I think I was more successful with it. And then once I got here, and I'm around these professional comedian writers and comedians and it starts to you know I just sort of focus on the visual aspect of it and uh, do you ever sit back and go that's pretty good uh, yeah yeah I do um, but not often all right let's take a look <laughs> at some of your work and you also appeared on the show so let's yeah. look at that okay let's go to the first graphic this will show you what a trillion what the number a trillion let's see this graphic where is it Where's, where's Chris, the graphics guy? Is there a problem? Chris? Oh, hi, Chris. Chris, uh, we're supposed to have the uh, visual representation of what the number a trillion means, so we can keep that in our minds. Uh, do you have those ready? I haven't made them yet. Uh, I, uh, 
Well, that's too bad. This is Donald Trump at his birthday party blowing out the candles. Excuse me, Dave. Dave? Yes. Excuse me. Uh, what? Excuse uh, me, Dave. Uh, oh, yes. Hi. Hi, it's Chris from the graphics department. I did the animation of Trump's hair. All right, nice job. That worked really well. Yeah, today's going to be my last day. I can't waste my life anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice welcome for Cartoon Dave? Uh, I, I, I'm the one who looks like a fool uh, because <laughs> there's a problem here. Where's the kid in the graphics? Chris Domino, where is, where is, Chris, Chris, what, yeah. we're having a problem with Cartoon Dave. What, what's going on here? Why isn't he on my desk? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. When did you ask for it? Uh, about an hour ago. Did you call the graphics department yourself? No, no, I didn't. Okay, so did you assume we could create a cartoon whenever you feel like it, numbnuts? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, good one. I guess I, I guess I did, yeah. Well, I don't have that, but I do have a kangaroo kicking you in the head. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> well, that's, actually, that's not bad. Thank you very much, Chris. Now you get back to work now. All right, that's just huge. You get to call <laughs> David Letterman a numbnuts? Yeah. I know my friends were freaking out about that. <laughs> you got to call Dave Numbnuts. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's cool. Huh? How much interaction did you have with him? Oh, none. None. Um, yeah. Uh, talking with him on air was the most I've had pretty much, you know, in my seven years. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's the what, nature of the show. What kind of a guy was he to work for? There, there's a whole bunch of you. Was yeah. he a perfectionist? Uh, I don't think give, so. Or did he give you know, the cast a lot of leeway. I mean, he focused on, basically the writers are writing in his voice in, in you know, a joke he would do, he would make. And so we present him at the end of the day with all these things that we've made in his voice. And, uh, you know, he either loves things or hates things or And somebody would call anything. you up in graphics and go, he doesn't like it, redo it? Uh, no, it's just that sort of dead, you know, it's, if he doesn't like it, Never Good sees time. a lot of day again. Did you ever get angry about that? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I mean, there are things, well, especially if it involves a skit that I was going to be in again, you know, and it just gets, or if this thing comes in, or another interruption, or another person, or something on, is on his mind that day, and he decides to spend 10 minutes talking about that, then everything else is just. Nothing. So you just you just wait to be called pretty much. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that, that you sent in to us. Um, this one, so did you have a conversation with him and where is this? This is at the Museum of Modern Art. This is the goodbye party, yeah. correct? Yeah. So it was last Wednesday? Yeah. What happened there? Uh, well, um, he you know, he 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 was very nice. Uh, I just went up to him and said, you know, thanks for Thanks for the past seven years. Uh, you know, I've been joined doing the graphics work for you. And he said, oh, I love your graphics. And, and then he's just sort of was, put his arm around me and said, who's taking it? <laughs> like, no, I wasn't going to take a picture. But, uh, you know, I was just saying well, hi. So he you know. was gracious in, in that because yeah. now you have this forever. Yeah. Well, uh, I almost went past it. And I said, well, since you mentioned it, uh, someone take our picture. You've got to speak up more, Chris. Yeah. All right, this next picture <laughs> is great. This is everybody on the show, and if you find David Letterman, mm -hmm. you're to the left there in the blue shirt. Mm -hmm. What was this moment like in time, and was this before the show or weeks no, this, before? this was before the final show? Yeah. Yeah, this was a couple nights before that, and it was actually really nice. He um, Usually we take, every year we take a picture with everyone, mm -hmm. and it's the whole staff. Uh, and this one, this was just the crew, and then he did the staff another day, and he came up in front of us, and he just said, oh, I just want to say thanks for putting up with me for all these years. I know, you know, some of you have been here a long time, some of you not so long, but it feels long, and uh, he just was very, very sincere and very appreciative of, you know, he was, he just became one of us in that moment. He was, uh, he was really nice. Did you see any tears? I mean, was he kind of choked up about that, or uh, was it, did it not quite hit him because it was a couple seemed, days before? He seemed humbled and just sort of recognizing that the end is here and 
um, you know, seeing all these people that put in the work for him, I think uh, it was it was pretty nice. Was there a conversation between any of you about him coming out and addressing you, and then him leaving? Did you guys talk amongst no. yourselves? No. Uh, well, afterwards, you know, and we didn't know that he was going to do that. Uh -huh. I didn't even know he was going to be out there. I just thought we were taking a, <laughs> a crew picture, but yeah. uh, he was. Yeah, we just thought it was so nice that he stopped to say something to us. Um, it's typically he'll come out, take the picture, and then take the picture, and then he leaves. And so it was heartfelt. Oh, yeah. We have another graphic. Now, you figured into the top ten list. Tell me about this. Well, this, so this is part of sort of the, the graphics package of the show. So it starts with the opening, and this is sort of related to that. So this is the act one tease, which leads into the top ten, and then there's another one that's for the act five, which leads into the next show. And so it all follows the same design. Um, the top ten animations themselves, they've been around for a while, mm -hmm. before my time, except for one, the political one I worked on. This was your last one that you did? Yeah, yeah, that, so was, that, uh, that was basically the last graphic I put out, which well, actually is not true, because uh, I think five minutes before the show started, Dave had a change to wording of a title card. So you're like, oh, great, now i got to redo this. Yeah, it was like another ten, you know, typical tense <laughs> moment, like, oh, I had to change this in two seconds. And... This shot is very iconic, I think. First of all, yeah. nobody has ever been able to see the desk. Is it not the hide or leather? I'm just curious. Mm. Not sure. I didn't smell it, but. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the microphone and the late show and the last one. Yeah. This is a really cool picture. Yeah, it was just there. It was last day was pretty fun. It was it was kind of like a field day. We didn't have too much to do until maybe later on, but so we were just sort of hanging out on set and the Foo Fighters were there about to rehearse and I just sort of saw the microphone was there and went to take a picture and it was all set up for me. So, we have a jacket here sitting on the table. Mm -hmm. Um, explained, you can hold that up. It's heavy, it's like a letter jacket from high school. Yep. How were you given this? Well, this was Dave's party gift to everyone, uh, the staff and crew. And it says Late Show. Yeah, it says. 1993, 2015. Yeah. Not a lot of guys have this, Chris. No, I know, I know. It's, I mean, it doesn't, I'm not going to wear it, but I know it's worth something. So, I mean, I. Uh, maybe you I'll put it in a frame. You should guard this with your life, yeah. leaving the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think frame. So you know, it's a really nice thing to how have. How were you given this jacket? Well, we get jackets every year, and we get them in a box, and mm -hmm. um, it's all wrapped up nice in the box, and we just open it up to see what it looks like this year, and um, we get them on Christmas every year. Uh -huh. But this one was this one's a little nicer than the rest. It's it seems a little more uh, well made and. <laughs> And iconic. Yes. How would you sum up your seven years on The Late Show? I mean, it's been a great experience. I think it all comes down to just the people you end up working with, because I've definitely uh, found a, a family with those people there. I have like a, a work mom and work mm -hmm. uncle and brother. Like, there's people that, you know, we're going to, you know, be part of my life for a while, I think. And that's, I think that's the biggest takeaway. Experience was great, too. I mean, Got to work with a lot of crazy people, and that's that's you know you could you could use that in the future. Now, as is show business, most of you guys have been furloughed. You don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. Stephen Colbert is coming in. He's bringing in his crew right. into the same studio. So you guys are all kind of looking for other things now, right? Yeah. Um, What's next? Well, I mean, I could use some time off, <laughs> to be honest. But I think. I don't know. I think um, you know. I have my my own side projects I'm working on. I'm I'm looking into you know starting a company maybe, um, but I'm not totally turning down any jobs that may come along. That well, you have seem quite the resume. Well, thank you. So yeah. speaking of side projects, yeah. you've come up with. I'm going to hold this. Okay. The keyboard waffle iron. Where <laughs> where does this come from? And it opens up like this, right? Yeah. Whoops, we caught yep. your shirt. <laughs> and it goes, it's not electric, but it goes on the stove. Yeah, it goes on the stove top, goes on the barbecue, camping grill. This is hysterical. Uh, where did <laughs> this come from? It started way back, actually 12 years ago, as a, it was a school project where we had to repurpose a typewriter. And I made it into, a typewriter into a waffle iron. So you put this on Kickstarter? Yep. And people start throwing money at you? Yeah. How much money did you make? 
Oh, well, my goal was 50000 and we ended up with 66000 Okay. You take the $66,000. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with it? Well, I'm glad they made it extra because I'm producing these, and it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of money. Um, so I'm getting these manufactured. I'm getting... It's heavy. I yeah. Should, I should say that. It is heavy. And you can pre-order them. Let's take mm -hmm. a look at some pictures sure. of the keyboard waffle iron. This is how I found, found you. Mm -hmm. You did some you did some shows on this, and I thought this is hysterical. I got to find this guy, and it turns out you were with the David Letterman show. Did you show anybody at the show that you're doing this? Oh yeah, yeah. So they all know about it. Oh yeah, everyone's been actually really great. While while the campaign was going on, I had a ton of people support and back the project, and uh, they almost even wrote a skit about it. Darn right. It was almost on. Well, you're gonna have to do it yourself now I know. With, with your graphics. All right, let's go. Now this is uh, you know what caught my I, is that I've been in television news forever. Mm -hmm. So this is very sweet to me. And I'm thinking, oh, you pour the maple syrup in there mm -hmm. and then you, you put the you know, fruit on there. This is hysterical. Let's go to the next one. Now, you start naming these. Is this The Bachelor? <laughs> yeah. Where does that come from? Uh, well, it comes from where I would typically come, you know, if I was going to make a waffle, I'm not, I just, I'm going to be lazy about it. I'm going to use the mix and I'm going to, throw some syrup on it and maybe powdered sugar if I'm lucky. You know, I'm just very lazy when it comes to making things. I have no right making a food product, but I'm doing it. I, <laughs> I shouldn't not, be doing it. Because you don't cook I don't bake. cook really. I'm not. Uh -huh. I could do breakfast and desserts. I'm, I'm okay with making those, but like I have no, I have no business to. I hope people, some, I hope people tell me how to use this thing when they get it. Like, cause well, I'm, that's the thing. <laughs> you should upload pictures on a website. Yes. You're going to do that, obviously. Okay, let's go to the next I'm one. I'm glad it's easy enough to use where I can make things that look good. What's this called? Uh, it was Blueberry Bliss, I think we called it. Blueberry Bliss. Yeah. How did we or come no, up? it was a Bluetooth berry. Bluetooth berry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Simple enough. This one. Oh yeah, this was pumpkin spice. Uh, you some... put some bacon in there. Yeah, I had this really good. Uh, <laughs> we just stole recipes, basically. Sure. Uh, it's it's a uh, bacon and butternut squash on that one. And it's, oh, so it's, and it's it's kind of healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not only for breakfast. You can now, do you can do other meals. This next one. Now, what happened here? Because these look like two different did you cut it in half what did you do well How did you make that a happy accident two pieces of bread fit perfectly side by side oh. in the waffle iron okay so i made it's a tomato mozzarella sandwich and basically it, it takes some time but once it heats up they squish together nicely and get the pattern you get a nice toasty keyboard pattern on the outside and we have another uh another one okay wait, what's going on here you've got some jams and this one yeah i partnered with a, a Gin's Jams, uh, it's like a local jam in Brooklyn that uh, she makes it from all organic ingredients and we just sort of partnered up and she made, this is the first time using it on a heavy industrial stove, which was mm -hmm. fun. Uh, this was like a, I think, well, it was jam stuff. So we put a little bit in, put jam in the middle and then filled it. Love that. And then it has like a goat cheese uh, little uh, frosting thing on top. All right, so you also have a shirt to go with this. Yeah. Lots, lots of shirts and jackets, I'll let you hold that up. Yeah, this is our slogan, Control Alt Delicious. Uh-huh. Um, which is, again, not me. It was basically back when it was on the internet and got popular. Uh-huh. I can't even credit who came up with this <laughs> comment. You know, people write comments. Control Alt is good, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, people have. delicious in this case. Exactly. So where do, where do we get these? And uh, how soon do they come out on the market? You could get them on the, the keyboardwaffleiron.com. Mm -hmm. And they're 60 bucks, they're right? 60 bucks, and you could pre-order it now on the website. And uh, basically, after that, they'll be here in late June, early July. And um, I'll, but right now, pre-order is only, uh, it's a limited amount left. But uh, once we get the new shipment in, there'll be a decent amount more. And then might have to get another order in as I push for, for the holiday season, because I think it's going to be a good gift for so people. So you're, you're in retail now? I'm getting there, yeah. <laughs> I know, I think about it, you know, a few years ago I was just working on maybe doing this and, you know, you don't think... Did you think about making it electric or no? It was always going to be I did, uh, and basically the way to do that requires just so much money up front and a lot of certifications uh -huh. and a, a lot of red tape because um, I wanted it to be this custom shape. I could have done it maybe with using an existing waffle iron, but that's only eight inches long, and I want it to be true to the keyboard shape. Because uh, I want, <laughs> when you make this, it's so cool when you make it, and it's, a real, it's the same size as your actual keyboard. Um, to me, that's 
the best part of this thing. And how long does it take on the stove? Once I pour in the batter, yeah, it's a few minutes on each side. Depends on what kind of stove top you have. Uh -huh. um, so a few minutes cooking on each side, and you give it a look. And you know, it depends if you want it crispy or soft. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, about six six minutes or so. Well, Chris, we're expecting wonderful things with this, as what you did for David Letterman. Mm -hmm. We're expecting a great website, and people are going to upload and show you what they're doing with their own waffles. I and hope I'm so. expecting fun graphics to come. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Chris Domino, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for really having appreciate me. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I made a journey on pursuits when one this in. Who is this girl? I spend all night kissing and a bottle is right here. Then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I found the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep locked in the grocery store of the mind. Same time, I skip right ahead in the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know? You know you.